maybe I should have to think about a few things today that I'm grateful for or think about the things that I have control over or the things that I can influence or maybe I've got a predetermined outcome about this particular thing in mind but let's take a step back and let's figure out how to how to move forward. Hi my name is Nathan Lovejoy. I am an actor and I star on Disney's Gabby Duran and the Unsittables and a whole lot of other things. A career that stretches from Australia all the way to the US and that's me. <laughs> awesome. So uh, this career of being an actor, uh, was that a long life dream or where did it start? Yeah, I mean, I was involved in acting at high school. I'm a really uh, tall guy. You can't get that from the, uh, from the Zoom screen, screen here, but I don't know if you, you know, if you type my name into a Google search engine, I think the first thing that comes up is that I'm six foot seven. <laughs> so when I was younger, my real dream was to become a, a professional basketball player. And that was the thing that I did um, when, I was, when I was young, all the way through to my late teenage years. But when I was at school, all the way from primary school to sort of like grade five and through high school, I was really involved in drama and school productions. And those two things were sort of, you know, playing off one another. Mm. It was basketball and, and acting. And then eventually I had to make a, a decision when I, when I got to about 18, 19, as to which one I wanted to do. But probably in late high school, I sort of started to think, you know, maybe I don't want to be a basketball player. Maybe I'd sooner be an actor. <laughs> so, yeah, it was certainly there and then kind of solidified as the, yeah. as the years went on. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how, did you, how did this journey uh, happen? Was it, I don't know, full of obstacles or you found it very smooth? Um, did you just like land gigs after gigs or you have to hustle <laughs> through the stuff you know sometimes like people have very different journeys and yeah totally I'm yours it, yeah it's a, it's a great question uh yeah i mean really it is a constant a, a constant hustle really and obstacle after after obstacle and they crop up in places where you don't expect them when you sort of start to think hey i think i'm starting to get this together i've got a little bit of a a bit of a role on here and inevitably you come up against another brick wall that you have to sort of navigate and find a way around or find a way to smash through. So yeah, it's always been hard and particularly going back to what I was saying before, physically being so tall, you, you know, I think um, uh, traditionally you think of actors being pretty short and I, <laughs> I think by and large that's, that's pretty true. There's some some short actors out there so my physical stature is always a thing it's not something that I am actively sort of thinking about day to day when I'm auditioning for jobs but I think that's always you know part of it yeah. um is you know even the show I've just worked on this, this Disney channel show by way of example can you have a six foot seven guy acting opposite uh, four foot nothing 12 year olds <laughs> so there's that I've always been uh, dealing with my physicality And then, of course, there's just the rest of it. Yeah, it's a really hard uh, profession and there's a, a, a lot of rejection. Everything you hear is, is absolutely true. So, yeah, the hustle never stops. And even when you feel like maybe you've broken the back of it a little bit and you think it's going to get easier, inevitably uh, it, gets, it gets hard again. So I'd say the, uh, the struggle never stops. Mm. So how do you like, stay positive along the hustles and the obstacles? Um, just to keep this, you know, the flame going and make sure you, you still uh, love acting. Totally. I mean, I think when you're doing it, like when you have the opportunity to work, uh, I always try and have that conversation with myself when I'm in the middle of a job, sometimes when it becomes a little bit of a grind. This last show, for example, we were shooting um, during the pandemic up in Canada in the middle of winter. I had mm -hmm. my wife, Jess, and we just had a, a, a baby. My son, Henry, was with us. And, you know, at different times, we were shooting for sort of six months, 20 episodes. And sometimes during the ebb and flow of the season, it becomes a little bit like hard work. Mm -hmm. And so I always try and remind myself when I'm in the middle of a job, you know, whether it's after I've just shot a scene that I've really enjoyed or, or even sometimes just walking back to my trailer in the snow, I try and give myself a little kick and remind myself that, you know, this is what you, you always wanted to do and you're, yeah. and you're here and, and you're doing it. So be grateful for this moment while you're in it because inevitably this job, like all jobs, is going to finish and you're going to have to start the process yeah. of finding whatever the next thing. And then outside of working, I think it really is 
a, you know, it's a mindset thing. And I've been finding that lately after finishing this job and, and we went back to Australia where I'm from for a time to visit family with our new baby. And now I'm back in LA and I'm so back. I'm back to the grind of, of trying to find whatever that next thing is, which I haven't had to do for a couple of years because it's, it's been nonstop with the show. And so you really just got to stay in, in uh, you know, what I call, a, I didn't come up with this. It's, a, it's a, a, a psychologist, Carol Dweck, I think, you know, the idea of growth mindset and fixed mindset, really trying to keep yourself in a, in a growth mindset so that when you do come up against those obstacles and roadblocks, instead of, allowing them to defeat you is embracing the challenge and uh, embracing the journey of figuring out how you're going to, how you're going to navigate your path. Yeah. And of course it's not, it, you can't stay in this endlessly positive um, uh, mindset. It's, it's kind of impossible. You are going to have your down days and, and, and your rough days, yeah. but it's about noticing when you sort of fall into those, those traps, and being able to sort of zoom out and, and and take a look at the bigger picture, and again think about as I was saying before those opportunities or that last job you were on, and and practicing gratitude for the place you've been able to get to, which is not nothing, but it's easy to forget that sometimes. So it's just really an, an awareness thing, I think, to mm-hmm. to allow yourself to feel down and frustrated sometimes but having the resources and the tools to be able to go okay let's just take a let's zoom out here and really have a look at what's what's going on Mm -hmm. and think about the things that you do have influence and control over and then keep moving forward basically yeah i love the positive energy and you talked about (laughs) (laughs) about gratitude earlier uh do you make a habit of practicing uh gratitude every single day or do you just like Again, I, I well, I I I know I, what what's the best way to explain it. It's like I get it in the abstract as we talk about it. Yeah, I I I know what it is, and I try and practice it. But I don't think it's um for me, it's certainly not habitual. You know, it doesn't happen automatically. I really have to to give myself a bit of a kick in the pants sometimes, or take some time you know when I get a moment's peace when I'm not looking after my son or, or with my family to to sort of do a bit of a laundry list of the things that I am grateful for but it's not always automatic for me I definitely can have a tendency to get a little bit uh, pessimistic and dark and so as I said before it is just about going noticing that that's what's happening and reminding yourself to do those things but I definitely say it's not habitual uh, for me which I think is true for a lot of people when you sort of when you try and explain to a friend or, or, or a colleague who's going through a rough patch, you know, you just need to be positive. We need to practice gratitude. You need to have a growth mindset. Those things are not, I always point out to people that those things are not automatic. It's not like you can be in that frame of mind all the time. It's about having the mindfulness and the awareness to be able to notice when you're perhaps falling into old habits or old traps and pulling back and saying, Hey, you know, I need to, it, it's worth me. Maybe I should have to think about a few things today that I'm grateful for, or think about the things that I have control over or the things that I can influence. Or maybe I've got a predetermined outcome about this particular thing in mind, but let's take a step back and let's figure out how to, how to move forward. So yeah, to, to answer the question succinctly, I, I do practice gratitude, but it's not, it's not an automatic thing and it's not, it's not habitual for me. I have to sort of remind myself to do it periodically, I think. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's, it's important as you talked about the awareness and, you know, thinking about the big picture. Um, I think it's important to develop this bigger picture. eye. you know, when you're uh, down and you're working on your own stuff, you know, and you, you don't really see what's happening out there. Uh, do you think it's important, especially for an actor to look at, you know, uh, the environment around you and being aware and looking at the big picture uh, sometimes or you you may, yeah, go on. Uh, Do you just not necessarily uh, work on it? It just happens. And sometimes you just have this, uh, you get out, you know, your own body and you look at yourself from, uh, from afar, you know? Uh, yeah do you mean sort of outside of the work like Mm -hmm. you mean just like the world at large yeah sense to have a yeah yeah i think so i mean i always try and try and do that you know i'm pretty i like to think i'm fairly well read and i consume a lot of news and i'm not probably probably to a 
maybe to a fault in some ways I feel like I'm not totally consumed by my career and and my job sometimes I think I'm going back but perhaps have a think feeling a little bit like this lately after coming off a job and starting to look for another one where I'm like mm. yeah not sort of and it probably has something to do with having a having just had a child and all the rest of it like I'm not just living and breathing acting and performance I don't have time to you know I'm not doing classes every day getting up and doing and doing vocal exercises I'm very much you know in in the world of my family and and in in the world which I think is is yeah I think is really important those are the things that make you a a wholly sort of three-dimensional human being they make you informed and I think all those things family the world around us uh those are the things that inform uh, our work and what we're able to do on stage and on screen are those lived experiences so i think that's that's that, that's that's really important mm -hmm. in a sense you could you could do all the acting classes and voice classes and camera classes in the world but if you aren't out there living your life mm -hmm. and, and gaining experience then that won't show up in your work i don't think mm -hmm. when i used to go to drama school many years ago in australia um, I was, what was I like, 20, 20 to 23, I think, when I was there doing it. And I auditioned a couple of times when I was younger, 18, 19. And often when you go and audition, I heard this, they, they said this to me, and often they would say this to other, other students. They'd say, you're great. You know, you have this amazing talent, these great skills, but you haven't, you haven't lived enough. Mm -hmm. You need to get out there and, and get some life experience and then come back and we think you'd be ready. So I think that's really true when you're younger and it, it, it continues to be true. I think that's always a risk as well as you, you get, get older as well. Some of those barriers start to go up or you sort of become quite insular. Or if you look what's just happened with the pandemic, we all sort of have gone into our, <laughs> our isolated yeah. caves and developed that cave mentality. So yeah, I think it's really important to keep engaging with the world and the people around you for all of us but i think particularly as an artist and a creative person it's yeah you can't do good work without it i don't think mm. yeah and i think that's where the paradox lies because uh when you're portraying a character uh, the goal is to portray this experience and what the character is feeling uh is living all, all that so the best way to embody that is to have this experience yourself so you can like pretty much like all the classes they give you the basics and but the rest is your own experience and that's where yeah you put the role notes and that's i think that's beautiful because you have to have this experience to portray the character you know totally totally and obviously you know when you hear about well not just method actors but any actor if you're um i was listening to a podcast with matt damon yesterday where i think it's this new new film that he has out i think it's called Stillwater, where he's a guy i haven't seen it but he's from oklahoma and he works on an oil rig and so he gained all this weight for the role and he went and spent time on an oil rig so there's that you know yeah. going and really understanding the role that you're playing uh, to, to that sort of level of specificity but more broadly speaking just day to day you're always accumulating experiences in your interactions with other people and the world around you that play into your work you know i i, I think empathy is obviously such a huge part of the creative process whether you're an actor or a writer or a director and you only sort of develop an, an acute sense of that by living in the world so mm -hmm. you're constantly every day is research it might, it might be that you go and spend three work three weeks working on an oil rig but really every day of your life you're soaking and absorbing things that mm -hmm. that play into your work yeah, yeah mm -hmm. definitely yeah as long as you're aware of the experience you're living you're, you're you'll be able to reuse that experience uh in a role yeah pretty much and you don't even have to be that's the thing is yeah you do, like with my example of kids trying to get into drama school when they're younger when when you get that that note of hey why don't you go and, and get some more experience and then come back it's not like you have to go out into the world and 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 be thinking right i'm getting life experience now you know you just you just do it you go you travel you get that first job you fall in love, um, you break up, <laughs> you have those relationships with your family, just all those things that um, that that can only can only happen with time and and with living in the world. But it's all a huge part of it, I think. Yeah, and you also talked about uh, looking at the next thing in terms of your work. Uh, do mm -hmm. you 
think about that a lot when you're working on a project. Uh, the next thing, uh, because you know, that's a great, uh, it's a great, it's a great question. I love and I love the I love the angle that you have for these these podcasts because they're such interesting questions. Yes, constantly. I guess we all do. I, I I think I don't know what it's like for you in, in your life, but the grass is always greener mentality. It's it's so hard to shake it and just just live in the moment constantly. Maybe for the start of a job, it's almost like you the best period is you audition, you audition for a job and you get it, and then there's a period of time before you you've heard you found out that you got it, and then you've normally got a period of time before the job starts. And that's such a great great moment however long that is it might be three four five weeks because you're like i got the job I haven't started yet i haven't messed anything up i'm full of sort of optimism and and, and and possibility and then it starts and normally then you descend into a, a pit of despair and, and doubt and self-loathing when you think you're messing it up and 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 that you're an imposter and someone's going to find out and you're probably going to get fired <laughs> and then you move through that and you probably start, and then then there's I think a period of enjoyment where you sort of find a rhythm and you get comfortable, mm -hmm. and then as it goes on, yeah, your mind starts to starts to wander to like, okay, well, what's this what's this next thing going to be? For me, I loved working on this this Disney show, but it was you know it's a, it's a kid show, and you start thinking, am I, am I ever going to get off this kid show? Am I am I going to be doing this kid show for the rest of my life? So mm -hmm. a, absolutely. And again, to what I was saying before, I think with all these things, it's just uh, that's normal mm. for all of us. And mm. I think it's just having the the self awareness and mindfulness to go, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't don't go over there just yet. You mm. know, stay here and stay here and and be in this. But yeah, all, all the time, that is yeah. a, a a constant battle. And then when it's done, you're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> I don't have that next thing yet. I should have just enjoyed, should have just enjoyed being where I was a little bit more. So yeah, constantly. Yeah. And do you think there is a balance uh, between you know uh, aiming for something better in your next gig and also just putting food on the table at the same time, uh, or do you just yeah. like, see what happens, or what what's your mentality regarding new new jobs and coming work? <laughs> yeah. But I'm, my yeah, it's man, it's both. I, I think a big part of why people from overseas markets um, come to the US mm -hmm. is because it is such a a bigger market, and there is so much more money. It's still very competitive and very hard to work, but when you do, uh, there's an opportunity to be paid really well, and there's a lot of unusual stuff around not the margins, but using this Disney show, for example, that opportunity doesn't exist in Australia. Uh, a show that's a 21 episode season order, shoots for six months. You know, it's a, while it's a kid show, it's a big, long, proper job and, and you're paid well. So that's definitely, I think, part of the attraction for people that come to the US and try and find work in this market. It's just that you're remunerated uh, properly. And so it's really just a balance. It's, it, it, that's part of the attraction of, of working in the US. And then within that, yeah. you're trying to find those things that are creatively satisfying and, and, and interesting. And I think that, that balance as you get older is, is just always shifting and, yeah. and changing. And now, you know, as I said, my wife and I just had our, our first child and that definitely yeah, it, it plays on my mind. Thankfully, my my wife is very successful in in her own right. She's an attorney, so thankfully, she doesn't have a, a unreliable creative job like me. So thank goodness that we have her. But I do still feel uh, in, increasingly a, a pressure to to go to work and yeah. and 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 just and just get it done. So it's a balance, and I think that that ratio is is always is always changing. I like to think if you could, if you were fortunate enough to have have more and more success and and have those jobs that that, that pay you well and, and put you in a a better financial position, that increasingly you can start to sh to shift that that balance and go. Well, you know what? I'm gonna this this job pays well, but I don't, it doesn't really appeal to me, so I'm I'm gonna pass on it. But there's certainly more pressure at the start of your career, even if something doesn't exactly speak to you. If the money's right, yeah, <laughs> you exactly. might just find find a way to do it. 
So yeah, it's a balance, and I think that's always changing and evolving as your as your career mm. goes along. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and I think there is at some point maybe if you have money saved up, you can still say, all right, I don't want this gig; it's not right for me. But at some point, you still got to live and survive. So uh, a little bit, and you're always just thinking about. I feel like it's only really recently that I've started to. I mean, I still worry a lot about that stuff. You know, what, when the next job is going to come, what it's going to be, and you know, I just was in the habit of sort of you'd hang on to your money, you'd, yeah. you'd just sort of put, you'd have it in a, a savings account that was earning zero interest, and and mm -hmm. and not be willing to sort of invest or do anything because you worry that that, that as soon as you let let it go, it it it, it would be gone. Yeah forever um so it, it, even then even when you feel like you've you've perhaps got a little bit of a a, a nest egg i feel yeah. like that sort of worry and concern uh, never goes away but i look forward to i i, I hope i get to that point where i can start to go you know what i'm not going to do that mm. i mean having said that of course i still there's things now there is obviously a, a threshold and a line where you're like this is i mean this is terrible i'm, I'm not i'm not going to do it but uh you can find a reason to do a lot of things yeah. <laughs> if, if you need to, if you need the, uh, if you need the job. Yeah. And uh, so regarding your, your career, uh, do you have a mentor, some, somebody that supports you? Uh, I guess pro like probably your family supports you and, uh, but do you have a mentor some, somebody to, to guide you? Not really. No, I mean, when I, studied and and did my three years of training i mm. feel like there was there was more of that and there was one particular teacher uh, when i went through drama school a guy called kevin jackson um who was one of my teachers who was a real uh, someone who I, i i found was a real mentor and a, and a real guide and probably had a, a huge influence on the way that my technique and my idea of performance and what it is to act came together Um, but less so, less so now. It's now it tends to come through consuming things, whether that's you know different TV shows or, or films or, or reading things. Those are the the biggest driving forces. So less so as um, as I'm older, but certainly when I was younger and training, there was more of that. And having said that, I, I do think probably I would I would if I'm being really honest, I would b benefit from some, mm. some more of that. I think it's like what I was saying before, where perhaps as you get further along in your career, you lose some of that technical discipline that mm. was part of your training early on. It all becomes a little more sort of ad hoc and lived experience and yeah. just following your instincts and some of that rigidity that comes with a formal acting training drops away because it's different you know i said earlier that i played basketball when i was younger there's when it comes to sport if you stop training and stop practicing your craft you become very bad at it very quickly yeah. that is is true of 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 creative stuff and acting but 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 to a, a lesser extent some of that that technical foundation i think stays there it doesn't go away you don't you don't sort of lose it it becomes instinctual but i think there's a there's a real benefit to keeping some of that that structure in place as you move through career as you move through your career and that becomes increasingly harder as other things come into play whether that be you know just how busy you are and family and and, and life so coming back to your question about having a a guide or a mentor or some sort of specific philosophy less so as I get older but yeah. perhaps there would be a benefit to <laughs> you know to have to having more of that and particularly in introspective soul searching periods where you are sort of looking for that next thing and perhaps you are starting to going back to your previous question yeah. chase the paycheck a little bit <laughs> that sort of thing uh, would probably be be beneficial So maybe it's something I need to think about, but yeah, less so, less so, less so these days and more when I was training and, and, mm. and younger, there were certainly people that had a big influence on the way I formed my opinions and my practice mm. in terms of performance and acting. And they still do, but I'm not in contact, contact with them anymore. Yeah. Con constant contact. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah, I think like you don't you don't necessarily have to uh, have a specific uh, vision in mind or uh, written goal. Um, I think the 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 more jobs you you, you do, uh, you get into you you find your own guideline and uh, yeah. But most important, you you find as you said maybe oh, I'm that like this job is not right for me. Even if you're chasing the money or or you're not. Uh, sometimes you have your own reason to do something or not, and that's your own. Yeah, that's how you find your your book of principles. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And you do need to be. I, I think I, in between the seasons of the last show I did, I, I was gonna sort of take myself off to class again. I've done some other since I went to acting school many years ago. I I've done some improvisation classes and stuff mm -hmm. here in LA, which is a really big thing. And it's very different to the style of improvisation that I did when I studied acting. So I've done a little bit of that. Um, and it's incredibly uh, uh, confronting to go back into doing classes and training when you haven't for such a long time, because you do, you sort of, your defenses come up, you, at, on some level, you assume that you're an expert because you've been doing it for so long. And so it's really, um, uh, you know, it's confronting to, to, to put yourself out there and potentially uh, fail again, even if that's just in a classroom situation. And I was on the edge actually in between seasons of this show, right before the pandemic, I was going to go back. I'd looked into doing some other particular classes here um, and never, never got through the front door because the pandemic happened. And so mm -hmm. I haven't had an opportunity to do it. But yeah, I think there's a real value in in getting back into a formalized sort of classroom situation and and getting smacked around a little bit by yeah. by a teacher or another director because that that doesn't always happen at work it does it can happen at work I've certainly yeah. had some uh, had some had some pretty firm words from some directors over the years but for the most part you're not you're not super pushed and challenged all the time particularly if you're in the flow of a a really long running show where you are the you know, like using the Disney show as an example, like I'm there every day and it's the directors that are changing and you are kind of the constant, the one person that everyone sort of assumes, well, well, you know what you're doing and everyone else is kind of figuring that out around you. So it's easy to fall fall into, you know, a little bit of a pattern and, and yeah. become a little bit complacent, I think. Yeah. yeah. So there's real value, I think, for, for all of us who are you know practicing professionals in whatever the field to, to to get back into the classroom and and keep pushing yourself to keep yeah. keep learning and keep evolving mm. and get smacked around as you say <laughs> yeah. a little bit mm. a little bit it's 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 yeah it's really really important and uh it's hard 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 to get yourself through the the front door of the, the mm. building to to do that but i do think it's it's really important yeah mm. All right, uh, Nathan, I think it's promo time for you now. So uh, you had amazing answers, so it's time to promote you. Uh, whatever you got going on, all the show, uh, tell us where we can find you. Yeah, no worries. Well, this particular show is called Gabby Duran and the Unsittables, which is a, a, a Disney show. It's on Disney Channel here in the US, and I think in other regions, it's going to be on Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm. So I think the first season uh, is on Disney+, Plus. Uh, you know, throughout Europe and all the rest. And it's a great show. It's a kid's show, but it has a real thread of, of adult humor running through it. So if you've got kids that are in that sort of, you know, nine to 15 year old range, it's a great show to sit down and watch with your kids because there's something in it for them and there's something in it for you. So, yeah, and I think the first season is available now. The second season is airing on TV here in the U.S. at the moment, and then it'll be up on, on Disney Plus uh, in other parts of the world real soon. 